Welcome back to the Ford Ranger ABT Brim Grand Final from stunning Lake Macquarie in New South Wales. It's the culmination of a wonderful year's fishing and the conditions are picture perfect as our pros strive towards perfection. One man who is certainly doing very well on this final day is Ben Godfrey. So well, in fact, that he's drawn a crowd by the Swansea Bridge. People very keen to see what this very talented young man can do on the final day. Steve Morgan, what about young Ben Godfrey? Ben Godfrey hasn't fished that many ABT events, but he's definitely won the right ones to qualify for this event. He won the Gold Coast Super Series back in August, which was worth $10,000. And he's staying put right next to the Swansea Bridge. Now, we've seen him already catch two. In fact, now he has three in the live well. And, yes, he's on for number four. The decision to stay put, Steve, is bearing fruit. That's right. There's an adage in fishing which says, do not leave fish to find other fish. And if Ben's doing this right, he will stay at this bridge until he's got his limit and until he's started upgrading. If I was Ben, That's I'd it. be staying here all day. He is so relaxed at the moment, even though this will be number four. He's got no idea what the others are doing, but he is on fire. Yeah, he's pretty relaxed and he's pretty focused because he's fishing light line and it needs all of his concentration to get these brim into the net and then into his live well. What a performance by Ben Godfrey and Team Club Marine. Four in the live well, just 90 minutes into the competition. Upgrades are beckoning. And you can see Ben's using to great effect the Berkeley Gulp Shrimp, a great bait on any part of the ABT tour. Ben, how many in the uh, well? Four so far, Starlo, so... Not a bad start, I guess. Only small fish, a couple of 26 and a half, 25s, but it's good to get five in the world and then you've got your confidence to chase your bigger fish later in the day. So if I can get me five, then I'll go chase some bigger fish. This bridge has been pretty good to you? Yeah, no, it has been good to me. The size is getting dropping and dropping each day. I think they get a lot more spook. There's a lot of guys fisted on their, on their two days of fishing as well. I found a lot of school fish when the tide was running, so I picked a few of them up and get my lure nice and tight as the tide sort of drops. Get it right into the structure, about 116th, 124th, and that's where I was getting my bigger fish. I will stick with it, mate. Thanks, mate. Now for our first look at Cameron Whittam, representing Team Humminbird. We've heard about three of our four pros so far. Steve, tell us a bit more about the second of our Victorians. Cam Whittam is a renowned Australian casting champion, so he's no stranger to competition. He's only been fishing brim tournaments for a short time, but he's already shown his prowess. Yeah, we're going to go for a move now. Um, oh, a combination of factors, I guess. We had a couple of little chances, but nothing to write home about. Um, obviously, the, the sunny, glassed-out conditions make it pretty tough to go and uh, catch fish in shallow water that might only be four or 500 millimetres deep. So it was worth a, worth a try, though. I got a nice fish here yesterday, and then, like I say, lost another one uh, later on in the day. And there has been some good fish over here. I got a cracker of a fish in pre-fish. But... Uh, we haven't been able to replicate that yet, but we'll go around to another bay just around the corner and see if we can um, knock on over around there. There's no hard and fast rules on how you should retrieve your lures, but getting it right for certain fish species and certain lures is a good idea. The best way for you to do that is to watch the pros out here today. Watch their hand movements, but more importantly, watch where the tip goes. The tip is a great indicator of how the lure is moving through the water. Also, watch how many turns of the handle they do. Picking up these tips will definitely put more brim in your bag. Back to Scotty Towner from Team Berkeley. Still just the one in the live well. And Scotty's persisting with his top water technique. Scotty's not a renowned top water fisherman, but he's got this technique down pat on this lake, although his pattern seems to be dying a little bit more every day. Good shot of the lure on the top of the water. He's on, Steve. That's right, and Scotty's got to get this fish out over that shallow weed because if they bury you in the weed, that light line he's fishing could give in. This fish is pretty important to Scotty. He needs a limit today if he's going to get anywhere near Ben Godfrey. I don't think this boy will be legal. Uh, at least they're starting to come on anyway. Oh no, he's, he's on the mark. He's 25. <laughs> I'm happy with that, it's number two. It's definitely 25. So I'll put him in as well. He's only a little fella, but as I said, every fish counts. You get five fish and then you go searching for the big ones. Now, Cam Whittam has moved around to the bay that he spoke about, and he's also fishing top water. There's one behind it, and he's on. Only a small fish, I think. Ah, oh, maybe illegal. Just need to grab that net. Oh, 
Now it's going to go. Ooh, ooh, maybe you're not. You know what? I don't think I've got a ruler. There we go. NW pencil. And I reckon that fish, I reckon something that's going to be just under. It's going to be 24 to 24 and a half. Too small and Cam Whittam is yet to get on the scoreboard. Now that's in direct contrast to this man here. Ben Godfrey from Team Club Marine has a full bag. No wonder all eyes are on this young man from the Gold Coast. He's on again. He's looking to upgrade if he can land this brim. Ben Godfrey's using this slowing of the tide to get in closer and closer to these bridge pylons. He talked about schooling fish before, which were masses of fish moving up and down this channel to the lake. The resident fish he's targeting now are hanging tight to the pylons and he's trying his hardest to get them out. Another 26, hopefully knock out one of those 25s. Another 50 grams upgrade, so every bit counts and first upgrade in the morning. Ben Godfrey from the Gold Coast fishing in the Club Marine boat has got his first upgrade of the morning. They're not big fish, but he's really happy to have five in the well and to be upgrading already. He's got hours to go. He's in a good position. And day two's leader, Stephen Wheeler from Victoria, still on zero. He's abandoned his original position on the boats and he's out on the flats now. It's a position where he caught most of his big fish on the first and second days. I want the wind to come up to provide a nice drift for me so I don't have to use the electric. The electric obviously sends a little bit of noise through the water, even though these mink are super quiet. It's uh, going to have a little bit more noise than no motor at all. So what I'd like is the wind to come up to give me a nice drift along the bay so I'm silent. And it also puts a bit of chop on the water, which for some reason makes the fish a little bit less spooky. They just uh, tend to chew a little bit better on rougher water. Oh, we're on. That's a brim too. Let's hope it's a size brim. He's definitely a bit small. Not big enough for Stephen Wheeler, and he is yet to get on the scoreboard. And the day is slipping away from our leader from day two. Time for another break. When we return, three of our pros give chase to the boy from the Gold Coast, our leader, Ben Godfrey. He's a very nice fish.